Hello and welcome to Magic Insider, your one-stop shop for the latest announcements, rumors, and financial trends in the world of Magic the Gathering. I'm your host, Damian, and this is the week of April 24th. What's new in the world of Magic this week? Let's jump in and find out. This weekend features yet another Arena Open event centered around the new set March of the Machine. The format will be March of the Machine sealed on day one, allowing players with records of seven wins in best of one or four wins in best of three to qualify for day two, and they're shot at a cool $2,000 US cash prize. March of the Machine Best of 3 Draft will be the format on Day 2, with players whose record is 3 and 1 or better making it to a second Best of 3 Draft for all the marbles. Of note, any players with a 4 and 0 record in the first draft of Day 2 will carry forward an unused loss pip to the second draft, essentially making their second draft double elimination, allowing them to stay in the running even if they take a loss. Good luck this weekend to all who participate. In other less reputable news, the online magic world was abuzz this week regarding an anonymous individual posting multiple videos on their YouTube channel showing the opening of several sealed boxes of March of the Machine Aftermath, a supplemental set due to be released next month for which official spoilers haven't even begun yet. How this individual was able to obtain this product well ahead of its launch is as yet unknown, though online speculation is rampant. Wizards of the Coast has since taken action to reclaim the sealed boxes from the individual, but the question remains, how do these unofficial leaks keep happening and what can WotC do to stop them? This is the third time this year that cards for upcoming sets have leaked unofficially, and while some players may enjoy seeing cards spoiled well ahead of their time, many stores are quite unhappy with this situation, as it can seriously impact the hype, buildup, and consequently the sales of these sets. We can only wait and see if future sets suffer from these same premature leaks, or if Watsi can rein it in. As if the issues with leaks weren't enough, Watsi dropped another bit of bad news this week, letting the community know that there was an error with one of the cards in the Secret Layer Artist series, Elena Danner Drop. The version of Seraph Sanctuary that's shipped with this particular Secret Layer has an unfinished version of the art on the card, instead of the actual finished work. While many players weren't happy to learn that a draft version of the art is what they're going to get instead of the finished version, many were even more disappointed to learn that WotC will not be sending them the correct copy of the card, but instead will be printing the corrected version of the card and that it will be included as the secret card in a different future secret layer product. Perhaps this misprint will become a highly sought after and valuable error card for niche collectors. Only time will tell. Speaking of collecting, the hottest three singles from the new March of the Machine set are, unsurprisingly, the three big Phyrexian baddies, Elish Norn, Urabrask, and Shouldred. While the value of the three Praetors have declined by over 50% from their pre-order asking prices, they are still extremely powerful cards that will almost certainly find homes in many different commander and even 60 card constructed decks in the upcoming months. This means the best time to pick them up may in fact be right now, before one or two of them show up as the secret tech or sideboard card in a Pioneer RCQ winning deck list and consequently spike back up in price. That's it for major news this week, but stay tuned as we break down the Pioneer format for the upcoming Regional Championship Qualifier season in our Tournament Tables Corner. Oh. Welcome fellow Magic aficionados! With the standard regional championship qualifier season behind us, the competitive Magic community now collectively turns its sights on the next format for the upcoming RCQ season, Pioneer. Now the next RCQ season takes place from April 22nd to August 20th, and stores will be required to run either Pioneer or Limited tournaments to allow players to qualify for the Pioneer regional championship later this year. Now, if you want to take the next step in your journey to the Pro Tour, it all starts here with Pioneer. So, let's begin by establishing a, a big picture view of the format and taking a look at which decks are currently thriving in the metagame by looking at their record-weighted metagame share, which represents each deck's share of total net wins in high-level tournaments over the last month. Now, these are the decks that you're most likely to uh, face at the top tables of any serious Pioneer tournament, so... Listen up. 
Rakdos Midrange is currently the most played deck, making up just over 12% of the winner's metagame. Now, playing some of the most powerful spells in the format, including Fatal Push, Thoughtseize, and Fable of the Mirror Breaker, this deck has been a mainstay at the top of the Pioneer metagame for over a year now, and shows no signs of slowing down, despite having a huge target on its back. Its plethora of removal spells make it a great choice if you're trying to demolish creature-based strategies like Mono White Aggro or the various Spirits decks. Uh, varying its suite of removal and interaction to adapt to changes in the metagame allows the Rakdos deck to easily shore up any bad matchups. For example, like switching to Power Word Kill instead of Dreadbore in the main deck to improve its game versus Gruel Vehicles, or packing Graveyard Hate like Go Blank and Leyline of the Void in the sideboard to crush the Greasefang decks. With the addition of Black Cleave Cliffs, making the mana even smoother, Rakdos is still the deck to beat in Pioneer. Azorius Control saw an uptick in play recently, solidifying it as the second most played deck in Pioneer with a 10.3% share of the winner's metagame, which may come as a surprise to some. A winning a long tournament with Control is not easy, since there are only so many answers one can pack into the deck, uh, while there are any number of different avenues that your opponents can use to attack you and defeat you. So optimally building Azorius Control requires a very accurate read of the metagame, and which specific decks one expects to face, since you can't have answers to everything, which in turn makes sideboarding and card selection paramount. Catch-all cards in the form of sweepers like Supreme Verdict and counterspells like Absorb are the backbone of the deck, as they line up well against a wide range of other decks. The Wandering Emperor and Teferi Hero of Dominaria combine for a powerful late-game plan, and when protected by efficient counter magic like Dovin's Veto, they can close a game very quickly. Abzan Greasefang is our first combo deck on the list with a 9.3% share of the record-weighted winner's metagame. The deck is attempting to put a Parhelion 2 into the graveyard as quickly as possible, ideally on turn 2, and then resolving a turn 3 Greasefang Okiba boss, which immediately puts the massive vehicle out of the graveyard onto the battlefield, and then Okiba Gang crews it in order to attack for 13 damage in the air. Now, winning from there is usually elementary. We saw a huge innovation to Abzan Greasefang happen at the last Pro Tour, where players adopted a Delirium package, featuring Traverse the Ulven to tutor up critical combo cards like Greasefang in order to go off. The deck also has a solid fair game if the combo fails to go off, featuring powerful cards like Asika's Chariot and Thoughtseize, backed up by excellent removal. Mono Green Devotion, the Green Menace, once the boogeyman of the format, has fallen out of favor since the last Pro Tour, coming in with just a 7.6% share of the winner's metagame. That said, it's still an extremely potent ramp deck using one-mana elves like Elvish Mystic and Llanowar Elves and the near-broken Nykthos Shrine to Nyx in order to ramp into six or seven mana as early as turn three. That means turn three Storm the Festival, or turn three Karn the Great Creator fetching a silver bullet from the toolbox sideboard, which is often enough to put your opponents in a stranglehold from which they cannot easily escape. While its main plan may seem straightforward, there are several infinite loops that can be achieved in the deck. For example, Karn grabbing the Chain Veil from the sideboard, along with Pestilent Cauldron slash Restorative Burst to enable Kiora Behemoth Reckoner to untap Nykthos infinitely, generating infinite mana. Practice plenty with this deck to familiarize yourself with the many lines of play you can take once Karn is on the battlefield, as the toolbox sideboard gives you a ton of options and flexibility in the games, and knowing what to fetch when is the key to emerging victorious with Mono Green. And that's it from the Tournament Tables Corner this weekend, but join us next week when we finally have some tournament results from the weekend, from Pioneer RCQs, Magic Online Challenges, and what impact the new set March of the Machines will have on Pioneer and Standard. We'll see you next week. Have a great one.